Hello and welcome to the new EMBN set. No, only joking, we are actually at Race Coast Cycles in the Midlands in the UK to look at the all new Turbo Store as well as a new range of Gen 3 Levos. Chris, I don't think I've ever seen so many bikes. I know, it totally blows my mind. It seems like I come in here, it's like bikes, bikes, all looking sparkling fresh. Blows my mind, literally. Yeah. Uh, so, folks, we're at, uh, like I said, Race Coast Cycles uh, in the Midlands, an all new turbo store. We've got the entire range of specialized bikes. We've got the Levos, we've got the Canevos, we've got the SLs, it's all in here, different colors. Chris, it's quite a difficult time, isn't it, if you're a specialised fan, to choose between the Canevo, Canevo SL, Levo, Levo SL? There's a lot of models out there for sure, isn't it? It's quite mo uh, mind-blowing, I think, coming into this shop, you actually get all that information about the bikes, you get to put your hands on them, see them in the flesh, because sometimes on the website, it doesn't quite give you the insight as to what the bike shop really does, yeah. does it? I think, I think when you come, the great thing about coming to a bike shop is you can, you can check out the colours for real, you can check out what size you yeah. need for your bike, and also, like a place like Raceco, I mean, Raceco have been in the e-bike business for a decade now, they've got quite a lot of experience, mm -hmm. so, you know, they can give you some insights into sizing, componentry, it's, yeah. it's quite important to come to a bike shop, don't you think? I think, yeah, you definitely took a load of stuff off the list there, but I think, as I mentioned earlier, just coming and seeing that bike, feeling it, touching it, sitting on it, you know, just getting, you know, hands-on. Nothing beats it in my eyes. Yeah. Okay, Chris, uh, enough of this sitting around talking about it. Let's go and have a look at some of the new levers. Okay, keen, let's go. Is that your choice, is it? The base model, 5250? 5250, and I'm loving the colour of this one, actually. Yeah. It looks amazing, doesn't it? Like peppermint green. Okay. Doesn't look good. Um, What's quite important is the fact that this is now the base level Evo. Now, if you cast your mind back to, uh, is it five, six years ago, 2016, the bike of that era was 135 mil travel. It kind of didn't, it did have a few faults to it, but we're now on the third gen and Specialized have actually sort of, you know, they've tackled some of those issues. And now we've got a bike here, which is actually far superior. You know, same price, 5250. The first bikes were about, I know, four, eight, five grand. Yeah. But it's, you know, more travel, better motor, better software. It's a big improvement, isn't it? It's massive. And I think what they've done to the actual name Levos, the, the different amount of bikes are actually in the range now. You've got all the different Levo models and, of course, the size, and I think, of these bikes, all the way from S1 up to S6. Literally ticks the boxes for anyone, shape and size, doesn't it? Yeah, and of course, me and Chris are different shapes and sizes. Uh, I'm actually an S4 person. What about you? I'm S4 as well, but I'm right, I don't know, you always take the mick out of me. I, I would probably go S3, possibly, I don't know, S4 for some kind of like trail cross country riding, but yeah. yeah, you've tempted me the right way. Let's uh, let's take a look then, folks, at not just the base model, but some of the other bikes in the range of Specialized in this amazing new store of race car. So, here's my bike. That, I mean, how can you beat the cobalt blue? I don't know, it just looks amazing, that colour, doesn't it? It just pops right out. The colours, I think, this year, especially got it bang on, haven't they? Yeah. Super excited. So, colours, I think a lot of people choose their bikes on not just the specification and the price, but also the colour, don't they? But, Chris, where's your head at between, say, a Canevo SL or a Levo or a Levo SL or a standard Levo? Where's, where's your heart? My heart? Well, I'm pretty tempted by that Canevo SL at the minute. I've been doing a lot of riding on that. I'm slightly going towards that more lightweight bike, but the big travel stuff. So kind of, yeah, yeah. that's catching my eye at the minute. Yeah, as has our colleague, Neil Donu. Now, if you guys are in kind of on the fence of what type of e-mounted bike to get, check out the Don's video on the channel and he gives a really good insight into how to choose your e-mounted bike. Now, look, we've talked about the touchy feely things and you know, looking at the bikes and getting the colour right. But there's there's more to it than that about going to a bike shop, right? right? Yeah, for sure. I think obviously you've got the guys here, massive knowledge of e-bikes. You've got the guys in the workshop that are good on the spanners. And of course, the guys on sales that literally know every single thing there is to know about e-bikes. So do you think it's peace of mind then more than anything? Definitely. I think, as I mentioned, those guys are super experienced. They probably ride lots themselves. So they can have experience of being on the trails and the sort of problems that e-bikes can potentially throw up as well. And, yeah. You and know how to deal with it. Yeah, so I guess, you know, if you've got a problem with your wheel coming loose or your forks losing yeah. pressure, yeah. 
uh, I'm pretty sure that a shop like this, you'll be able to wheel it back in and say, guys, you know, can you help me out? And, yeah. you know, and, and also such things as the setup of your bike as well, exactly, right? Exactly, yeah. And I think, it, as you say, the bikes do go wrong. I think Specialized probably do offer one of the best warranties in my eyes, I think. Yeah, well, let's not get too far away with Specialized, even though this is a turbo store and we've got a lot of turbo new bikes here. But, you know, I see so many people with the wrong pressure in their fork and shock and stuff like that. These are the kind of things that a bike shop will actually put you right on right from the start. Yeah, they? just the basics really, get you, you know, kick you off on a good foot forward as soon as you're out on the trail, gonna experience the e-bike at its best. Absolutely. Now, it's one minute past five here at Raceco and they've had their first sale. Rich has bought your first e-bike. It is my first e-bike. Wow, which one did you go for? I've gone for the Comp Carbon in black. A mighty fine choice, I have to say. I came in for an alloy, but then saw that one. And... All right, did, did Rich over here convince you? There's Rich over there, look. He's the salesman <laughs> supreme. <laughs> he, he didn't twist your arm, did he? Only a little bit. <laughs> okay. uh, but what a bike, you've got a 700 watt hour battery, you've got the Mastermind display on there. I'm sure Rich has told you all this stuff. The new TCU on it. Yeah, you must be looking forward to your uh, first e mountain bike experience, right? Yeah, it's gonna be good. Yeah. And uh, I hear that your partner might have got one as well. Is your partner? Uh, she's thinking about it. Okay. If, if it rides as well as the say it does, then she may be swapping hers and getting a new one. Oh, great. Hey, listen, I hope Rich did you a good deal on that bike. He did indeed. <laughs> Looked <Thanks>. after me. <laughs> now, before we leave Race Coast Cycles, folks, Chris is going to take you through the range of the new Levos. Yeah, we have three, base, uh, three colors on the base models, four on the comp models, and one color in the carbon ones. Boom, get yourselves down to Race Good Cycles. So what do you think of those bikes then, Doddy? Looking pretty good, aren't they? Good price point. Do you know what, it really bugs me. They don't seem to be able to make a bad bike, do they? I know, they do look good, especially well, those new colors as well. You know, Neil won't stop batting on about them still since he made that video, but uh, I reckon he might turn his nose up. So <laughs> he seems to like the more expensive bikes, doesn't he? Definitely does. <laughs> right, time then for a bit of news. Now, have you heard about this bad to rad campaign, Doddy? Yes, I love people clearing up litter on trails. I hate people that litter trails. Bad, isn't Scum. it? Scum, yeah. So Muck Off and Trash Free Trails have joined forces and they're urging you to get out there over the winter period, get out there and clean your trails up with the Bad to Rad campaign. All you need to do is take a bag out there, pick all that litter up, upload it on Instagram, use that Bad to Rad, bad to rad hashtag and you could be in with winning a load of you know cool prizes from Muck Off. So yeah, good yeah, stuff. It's, I think it's really good. I'm really pleased that Muck Off have actually bothered to do this anyway to raise awareness because if you take it in, take it out. Exactly. That's the way it goes. Easy as that, isn't it? It's a pretty funny video, actually, as it well. It's cool, isn't it? Chopper and Deacon at their best, as always. <laughs> um, and our bike that slipped under the radar recently is this FLX Blade Hardtail. Now, it does look a bit funky, right? Yeah, so I'm just looking at it. It's fairly street biased head angle on that. It is funny geometry, but I'm liking the actual brains behind this bike. Well, the bits that we tend to struggle with in the e-bike world, namely being the drivetrain. And looking at this, got a carbon uh, Gates carbon belt drive on there. Yeah, smart. roll off hub. Yeah, 14 speed. Yeah, exactly. And 910 watt hour battery. Man, there's a lot of stuff. I think that hub's got some like 526% gear ratio or something bonkers on there. Yeah, cool, aren't they? bomb proof those things as well. Yeah, 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 I think for e-bike use, I think that's definitely the right way. Um, as you say, pretty funky. Uh, 910 watt hour battery? Yeah. Flipping heck. So it can go for miles as well. So there's two different uh, guises of this bike. Got the standard mountain bike, which again is still a little bit funky looking, but then you get the touring one, which comes with mud guards and all that stuff. I think if you're putting the miles in on these bikes, it could be I mean, who's, worth the ticket. Who's this one for? Um, She's I got kind of the component on it, it's a little bit confusing. She's got mm. a pike on the front there, you've got like decent spank wheels and Maxxis tires, yeah. uh, but no dropper post. Yeah, it's an odd mix. As I say, I, I'm liking the idea of the bike, not this bike particularly, but they are working on a full suspension version of this bike, so maybe we will see those guys go into, you know, more mountain bike style of bike rather than just that hardtail slash kind of commuter bike. But as I say, I think they're ticking some boxes uh, uh, with this bike. I think what I like is uh, internal transmission mm -hmm. and e-bikes. Yeah. Uh, kind of, I think we're all waiting for an integrated motor and yeah. gearbox to and start happening. Belt drive, no more rusty, noisy chains. Those things are really good, yeah, to I'm be fair. To that. Mm. So yeah, interesting stuff there from FLX. Now, what do you think about this one and Doddy? Have you heard of Fulger bikes? I've never heard of them. <laughs> no. <laughs> do you know what? So obviously I, I don't really work on this channel. I do ride e-bikes, but the thing that staggers me about electric mountain bikes, what, in the last four years mm -hmm. since the channel started, 
There must be about 50 brands I've never heard of that have just appeared. Yeah. It's insane. Yeah, it's crazy, isn't what it? It's, it's news to me, some of these names, you know, every week we're seeing new brands bringing bikes out. But again, we're seeing that shift towards those lightweight bikes again, and Fulger have done this bike. So this is sub 20 kilos, 19.4 kilos. 6,780 euros for this bike. Full carbon frame, mullet wheels on there. And interestingly enough, it's got the new Polini motor on there. So this pumps out 90 Newton meters of torque. So it's a high That's torque a unit, torque, yeah. yeah. And of course, mixing it with those batteries. And this is where it gets pretty interesting is the battery differences on this bike. 504 watt hours as a standard battery, but you've got two different range extenders on this. 125, 250, or a 380 watt hour extender pack. So you can really tailor the battery size to suit the type of riding you're doing. And I think it's kind of where the, these manufacturers get in these lightweight bikes is by skimping on those batteries. So I don't know, what's your thoughts on these smaller batteries mixed with extenders? Should we... I, I, do you know what? I. I really don't know. I know Neil made that video riding the SL to sort of see if it worked for him. I just find like lightweight e-bikes to be a bit of an oxymoron. It's a bit, it's a, I don't get it, like, because they're not light, are they? And yeah. are, are you going to be able to throw it around any more than a heavy enduro bike? Yeah. I know that's not the point of them. Yeah. Yeah. I really like what you call a full fat e-bike that I'm, I'm riding. Yeah, yeah. It yeah. is heavy and it does, because I'm not riding all the time, it does take me quite a while to tune into it, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I love what it offers. Yeah. It's a weird, I think a weird, time we're at with e-bikes at the minute. We're either seeing those super lightweight bikes mixed with that full powered motor, or we're seeing the detuned motors with the smaller batteries, kind of like that middle ground. There's almost three splinter categories now in e-bike yeah. world, which is, it's interesting stuff, but... Um, I think there's a body weight thing as well, isn't it? Yeah. I know Jones will bat on about that, mm. but at my weight, I don't know what I weigh these days, probably 200 pounds or something, but um, I don't see the point in yeah. me running a low powered one. I think if you're a lighter rider, you could get loads from something like that. Yeah. It'd yeah, be really good. Range, but yeah. And chargers looks like we're moving forward with the chargers. Now, Engineer have launched their Lion Charger, which is pretty interesting, right, Dolly? Yeah, I think so. I've been able to have a compact, yeah, well, at, le at least a manageable charger. Yeah. I hate some of the big chargers. Oh, yeah, and uh, lucky enough to have a few e-bikes here, obviously working on EMBN, and the amount of different chargers you've got to, got to have for each bike is a bit of a pain as well. And this charger literally does it all. So you have a separate female lead, which can charge any e-bike out there. And the cool thing about this is it's got a winter hibernation mode too. If you're not using your e-bike over winter, you can plug it into this charger and it will monitor that flow going to the battery to make sure it's kept in its you know prime health and it's not degenerating left you know leaving it for months on end uh, sounds like it's battery. borrowing technology from my uh, my Worcester boiler actually <laughs> it's got frost protection it's the same thing isn't it to stop the pipes and stop your battery cells definitely <laughs> failing good idea <laughs> I yeah. think it's super cool isn't it? it fits in your pocket literally you know if you're going riding off miles sling it in your rucksack so now that is a major benefit yeah I mean I remember I did that overnight with Jones way back yeah. we had to take the full size yeah, chargers yeah, yeah. takes quite a time didn't they yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah exactly. it's no point okay. and last thing I want to touch on this week I'm sure your mind has been blown as well as mine Doddy yeah. Acrig on his new, uh, on that 4C bike. The greatest of all time, <laughs> as far as technical bike riding goes. It's simply mind blowing. I think, as we all know in videos, that stuff often gets made a lot more, a lot, you know, smaller. You don't appreciate the steepness of the stuff, the grip levels, and the technical riding that he's doing, but it's absolutely mind blowing. I, I mean, think it, it, I think probably the most outstanding thing about Chris and his videos are that we both know how much technical stuff he's riding, yeah. but there's a subtlety to it. It never screams out like, check this clip out, mm -hmm. all of it just flows. Yeah. And if you realize what's going on, it's like, oh my God. I mean, I put a post, I watched it four times on yeah. the trot. I just couldn't get over it. Yeah, it's, Unreal. It's, it's crazy how he's got so in tune with that. I think it's super exciting. Chris's power mixed in with that e-bike motor power yeah. is just, it's taken him to another level again, I think, hasn't it? It's, yeah, I mean, we've always known he's got the transferable skills for motor trials and mountain bike trials, but it's also kind of cool seeing some other trials riders having to go. Yeah, yeah, see that Jack clip? Out of the, uh... Yeah, well, no, actually, I was thinking motor trials. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, Fuji oh, Gas Tony Bo, and Tony Yeah, Bo. yeah, 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 yeah exactly. a number of them have got yeah, trials bikes. getting on it. Nice. Now, a great way of supporting us here on EMBN is to get in that merch shop and check out all the new kit and order some. If you want to look fresh for 2022, it's going to be the best way to do it, right? Yep, absolutely. Yep, you can support multi channels as well. Yep. There's a lot of us. Yeah, we've got EMBN, GMBN, of course, GMBN Tech, all that cool kit in there. Get out there and support us by clicking that and filling that shopping basket up. Coming up this week on EMBN, we have a great week of content as always. And what are you looking forward to this week then, Doddy? 
Uh, well, I don't know, it's so close to Christmas, probably just having a few beers at home with the family. Yeah, having a bit of turkey, right? And, and watching all the bloopers that Ewan Jones have messed up over the last yeah, year. Yeah, some good That'd stuff. Good. Yeah, good stuff coming up on that on Sunday. And on Monday, we've got the best upgrades for your e-bike. The, the upgrades you should be spending your cash on and not wasting your cash. So look out for that one. Okay, so comments and questions from a video from last week. I think it was your video. Uh, should your next bike be an e-bike? That's or right. Should your e-bike be an e-bike? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so first comments from UK Bren. The cost is kind of hard to justify, uh, but you forget about that when you see some of the inclines in front of you. You just feel invincible. Yeah, I totally agree with that. That's the best thing I think when you first get an e-bike. You know, you hit those hills that you used to struggle on on a standard mountain bike, and you just literally blast up on an e-bike. It makes it way more fun. So for me, it's the weather. When, yeah. it, when it's hammering the rain outside, right. I, I literally have to just laugh and just go on yeah, an e-bike. Yeah. It's like whatever. Waterproofs on, full mud guard set. They are literally the best. Uh, Island Aerial says the main drawback I've discovered is the higher cost of maintenance and service, uh, mainly because I ride it so much. Mm -hmm. But so what? It's a fantastic machine that's almost changed my uh, so it's changed my almost 60 year old life. Yeah, I think it's interesting. We we spoke about that before. Do they actually use you know wear your drivetrain out that much quicker, or is it that you're actually just riding more? You're riding more often. What's your thoughts on that? You must a, a bit of both to be honest. But I mean, putting an additional torque than what you're going to be putting through is definitely going to wear it out. Yeah. Uh, but there's always an answer for that. Is mm -hmm. just pick what your consumable parts are. Yeah. Shimano have got Link Glide, mm -hmm. which all right, there are supply chain issues with everyone, but totally check out Link Glide. Yeah. It's heavier, but it's going to last way longer. Way more durable, yeah. isn't it? Uh, Brendan Noble says uh, the top three downsides of an e-bike are. Uh, price, the price, and the price. <laughs> I think it's definitely something we've seen manufacturers address in definitely this yeah. last tail end of the year. Um, obviously, Specialized dropping the prices of their Levo, um, more accessible now, just starting over just over £5,000, or Bear Rise. There's plenty of I mean, good value bikes like a Canyon. And, yeah, you know. I mean, I think you shouldn't, no one should confuse good value with cheap, though, no, exactly. because they are, I think they're really good value, what you actually get, but mm -hmm. the tech's got to come in at the top level to filter down, and I think it's yeah. only just old enough now that you're starting to see that. Starting to see it, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, there's some good value bikes out there. Get on board, and you definitely won't be disappointed. Right, it's time for fail of the week, and we've got this interesting crash in here from Tom. He's on his specialised lever out in Gloucestershire, seeing his friend took a bit of a tumble trying to steep, uh, steep rock drop. What do you think, Toddy? <laughs> so that's a pretty rubbish crash. Isn't it? <laughs> it's pretty. I don't know. It's an interesting way of getting out of it. Kind of like a commando crawl off into the bushes. Yeah, I'm just but... going to go straight for those hawthorns over there. Yeah, <laughs> paddling away. What, what's worse? Do you reckon a bad crash to get away with or a rubbish crash when all your mates are watching? I think rubbish crashes tend to hurt a lot more. I've always been a lot more hurt in rubbish crashes because you're yeah. kind of not expecting it, but these big high speed ones obviously got all the inertia and momentum to take you out of it. But sometimes a crap crash like that will hurt way more. I don't know what your experience is. A bit of a mixture of both, to be honest. Yeah. I think the worst ones, whatever happens, obviously once we get hurt, but yeah. those long crashes. Oh, yeah. You know, sometimes you get hurt, sometimes you don't. But the ones where you're, you're fighting to stay upright and it's oh, taking yeah. so long before you actually hit the deck. Or, like, oh, or you get like a series of like, you might like slip your grip there and you get your hand <laughs> back on, then you hit a tree and then you clip your pedal, then you get high-sided, that's like. So I've got a bit of a, a wonky wrist, it like wobbles around and every now and then it can, can give. And right. if it does, it's always like straight to the bars and you're like, Oh yeah. man, this is bad. It'll take like 100 meters before you're properly off the bike. God, no stuff. But we love seeing all your action here on EMBN. Don't forget, if you've got any cool pictures, videos, anything you want us to see on the show, use the upload service, and the details for that are down below on screen. Right, it's time to go where in the world to see where you guys have been riding your e-bikes all over. What we got, Doddy? The first one, just, don't know what to make of this. This is from Lazarus in Brisbane, Australia. Mm -hmm. The Dirt Girl Spa. So I'm just looking at a picture of his nice Merida lent up. Look a bit closer, look at that stump. Whoa, it looks so like it's been carved out a bit and there's a couple of Barbie dolls in there. Oh God, and yeah, I'm okay. guessing that's the Dirt Girls and yeah. that's their spa. Oh nice. So random. That's <laughs> so cool actually, a nice trailhead sign, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's like cool. That. I like a bit of trail art. I think we've got one down our way, it's just called uh, Red Bonnet and literally there's a car bonnet just smashed up in a tree. That's as good as it gets right <laughs> here. <laughs> Red Bonnet tree. Here's what it is. Uh, next up we've got Gunner here, getting a bit festive. He's got a specialised turbo Levo comp out in Mount Diablo in California. With do an you upside down tree above his bike. Do you stop and kiss your bike when you pass under an uh, enormous mistletoe? That's huge, isn't it? It is. Oh, that's okay. I don't think I'd ever kiss my bike, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> and last, we've got Nicola here, here with a Cube Stereo Hybrid 160 out in Ascendant. Where is it, Donny? Bulgaria. Bulgaria. 
that's better. Um, <laughs> riding technical trails up and down my hometown, which lies in the curtains of the Rodot Mountain. Looks like you've got some crazy that's climb really going nice on. That's a really nice looking bike, actually. It is. I love seeing all the elevation here on EMBN, you know, how people get up in the mountains rather than, you know, and just climb some miles there. Loving it. Yeah, looking good. Yeah, well, thanks for all the submissions for Where in the World, as I mentioned earlier. Use the upload service to get featured on the show. Right, it's bike vault time to see if you guys are going to get a nice or a super nice. We've got some strong entries in this week, so I'm hoping we'll get some super nices. What we got, Doddy? Uh, first up is from Andy's uh, Canevo comp, but more importantly, it's taken down by old Harry Rock. You might have seen Warner crawling on his hands and knees over that. Uh, nice, nice bike, nice shot. A bit of blue sky would help that shot, wouldn't it? It's a scary location. I'd blue be in sky there. in the UK? Are you crazy? <laughs> <laughs> nice. Awesome looking bike. Okay, so next up we've got a bit of family action going on oh, here. This yes. is Thomas. He's got a KTM Prowler and a KTM Mini Me. Oh mate, how, super nice all day long. Yeah, it is, isn't it? He's out yeah. in Czech, uh, Czech Republic taking his eight-year-old son out for a spin. And I love that. That's really cool, isn't it? I don't think we see, I've not seen one of them in the UK, but I'd no, love I've, to get hold I've, of one of those. That looks really mm. cool. I, I love the idea of kids riding e-bikes yeah. actually, despite what many, I think, uneducated people will say about it. Mm. If you can get a kid on a bike for longer, yeah, it's just a great thing. I think the worst thing about being a dad of taking your kids out is that, like, and they get tired and grouchy. Yeah, and like it just ruins your ride yeah. straight away. So if you've got an e bikes helping them out, uh, awesome. definitely. So that's got to be a super nice. Uh oh, trail dog, trail dog alert with, with a track. Uh, awesome looking track as well, to be honest. Yeah, so this is uh, Sarah with her. Uh, Trekkie Caliber. So that's the short little travel, 60 mil travel on that bike. It's the yeah, shortest uh, uh, e bike. Uh, travel out there, but yeah. You nice know the shock shot. on those is like a structural part of the frame. Does you it know? flex the back end, doesn't it? No, or it, just, it, it kind of works like a, um, like a piston slides over okay. the other part that's attached to the frame. Right. So it's kind of hard to describe. Rocket Machine 29 over that little travel, but it's absolutely flying. Um, taking his dog Ollie out for a ride. I think it's got to be a super nice, nice yeah. seat. Yeah, all day long. Uh, cool, got a bit of uh, colour coordination going on with the flower pots and the graphics and the all the hope bling, fox forks on the Kashima. Liking that. Well, by a wild FS. I've never even seen that model. That looks awesome. There's yeah. Calvin, he's out in Las Vegas. Doesn't look like oh, Vegas, does it? It looks like somewhere in the UK with the uh, garden set up like that. But um, just gone out for a weekend's ride and cleaned it up when he got back. That's yeah. a really, really nice bike. I'd go super nice on that, to be honest. Super nice. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> hey, uh, next up, Gustavo, he's got a sense impulse e-trail and i don't think we've seen these never on heard the of the show brand. again but i mean check out that backdrop this is just showing you how people are accessing the countryside i mean you'd never see a map you know if that's your first e-bike getting out there you know exploring blows my mind to how far you can get up in the mountains yeah amazing. yeah that's really cool so he's out in Guram, Guramaranga in brazil nice exploring the batteries mountains in northeast brazil with friends yeah, it's got to be, I think that's a super nice for sure. Awesome. And then a little bit closer to home in Great Manchester, you've got Paul with his Trek Rail 7 2021. A little bit of a waterfall. It looks cool, doesn't Feature it? Behind. Looks a cold shot that after the Brazil shot, and that rounds it out for this. Uh, They're good bikes as well, those. Yeah, it's got to be mm. a nice for sure. But yeah, thanks for sending us those bikes into us here on the Bike Vault user upload service to see if you guys can get a nice or a super nice. Uh, and that is the end of the show. Thanks for joining me, Doddy. No um, worries. Get involved in the comments box below. Let us know what you think about those new Levos and all the bikes we checked out on the show too. Make sure you subscribe to us here on EMBN and we shall see you next week. See you later.